residents of Winchester Gardens. I'm so happy I could be meeting with you virtually today. Um, my name is Emma. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and I work at St. Barnabas Medical Center. Um, today I will be talking to you a little bit about eating well and aging well. Um, this month is actually National Nutrition Month, so we thought it would be a great opportunity to get you all thinking a little bit about nutrition, ways you could add nutrients to your diet, and I'm hoping you enjoy this next presentation. All right, so let's get started. Okay, well we all hear about how important it is to have healthy habits so that we feel better, we have more energy, and we might even reduce our risk for certain um, health conditions. And this study here really highlights how important and impactful it is to have healthy habits. The study found that people who don't smoke, who exercise, who drink in moderation, and who eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day live an average of 14 years longer compared to those who don't adopt these habits. That's pretty significant, and it's great to know that it's never too late to start having these habits. Whether it be quitting smoking, beginning to exercise regularly um, by walking or finding an activity that you enjoy, to drink in moderation if you do consume alcohol, we'll discuss what um, moderation would entail in a future slide, and you could add some fruits and vegetables to your meals and snacks. So these are just some healthy habits that you can consider adding in. As I mentioned in the last slide, one of the benefits of healthy eating is it can lower your risk for certain health conditions. And in this slide, we'll get into that a bit more. So studies and research have found that by eating at least five servings of vegetables and fruits a day, you can one, reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke by 30%. Two, it can help you lose weight or maintain a healthy weight. And three, it can enhance your immune system so you don't get sick as often, which I know is very important now with the pandemic. And another benefit, health benefit that you might find, is if you swap refined carbohydrates and replace them with whole grains, you can lower your risk of heart disease by 33%. So these are just some things to think about to motivate you to make some changes. So now we'll talk a little bit about nutrition and aging. So as we age, our nutrition needs change. We may need fewer calories, but we need just as many nutrients and sometimes even more nutrients. And this is important to think about because if we're eating fewer calories, that means we have to have more nutrient-dense foods in order to get the same amount of nutrients that you could have got if you were eating maybe 300 more calories. And some nutrients of concern for people over 50 are calcium, vitamin D, and B6. People over 50 might need more of these nutrients than younger people, so you want to be having foods rich in these nutrients or supplementing these nutrients. So now that you've heard a little bit about the benefits and the importance of getting all the nutrients you need, you might be wondering, how can I get started? So here are three, three simple tips to get you started. Number one, try to eat a variety of colors and types of fruits and vegetables. So we always say eat the rainbow. Make sure you're getting those red um, apples and peppers, those orange oranges and squashes, um, yellow bananas and squashes, and green broccoli and greens, for example. So by having all those colors and types, you'll be getting a variety of nutrients. Number two, make half of the grains that you consume whole grains. So this can be an easy swap, like changing white bread for whole wheat bread. Um, and it'll make a difference, those small habits that you make. And number three, limit the fats and added sugars in your diet. So when it comes to fats, we do need fats as part of a healthy diet, but we want to make sure that we're choosing heart-healthy fats. And that's why we suggest limiting saturated fats and eliminating trans fats. Saturated fats would be found in dairy and animal products, so you can limit your saturated fat 
by choosing low-fat dairy or reading the food label and choosing the option with the lowest saturated fat content. For trans fat, they are banned, so they shouldn't be in any foods, but just to double check, you can check the food label and it should say zero grams of trans fat. As for the added sugars, you would find those in foods like cakes and processed sweets and candies, um, and they might even be in your juice or in your drinks, like sodas. So you can either just cut back on the portion of those foods that you're having, or you could even check the food labels and read for added sugars and try to keep it below 10 grams or choose the lowest option possible. So these are just some simple tips to get you started and we'll go into details in the next couple of slides. So in the next couple of slides we'll go through more details about the different types of food groups but we'll start here with the importance of fluids. As we all know hydration is very important Water plays an important role in a variety of functions in our bodies. We use water to regulate our body temperature, to help with digestion and removing waste from our body. It even lubricates joints and cushions organs. It also helps maintain good skin integrity and it prevents dehydration. So by the time you feel thirsty, your body is already dehydrated and it's very important that you're drinking throughout the day even if you don't necessarily feel thirsty because your body needs the fluid. The general recommendation would be to consume half an ounce of water per pound of body weight. So this would be 60 ounces of water for a woman who weighs 120 pounds, and it would be 100 ounces of water for someone who weighs 200 pounds. So the amount of water someone needs varies based on their size, and it's important that you figure out the amount that would be appropriate for you and aim for that every day. So if you're not sure if you're getting enough water right now, um, you could look for some signs of dehydration. Um, the obvious one would be a dry mouth, but you might even feel a little bit fatigued or have a headache. Um, you could even have a higher body temperature. Um, and also dizziness, weakness, and confusion are other signs that you might be dehydrated. So how can you make sure that you're meeting your fluid needs? Um, we have eight tips right here. Um, number one could just make, be making sure that you have um, a water bottle or a glass of water near you at all times. Sometimes the reason we're not drinking is because we might be out and about and we didn't bring it with us. Um, and having it with you is kind of a reminder to make sure you're taking a sip of water. Um, you could also get your fluids from coffee or tea. Um, from a low sodium vegetable juice or iced tea or lemonade and even a cold glass of milk. Um, if you are bored of water and that might be the, the reason why you're um, not having it as much, you could add some lemon, lime, or orange juice to water or seltzer for some extra flavor. You could even have a bowl of soup if you don't feel like having your fluids in a, in a glass and you want to eat them. Um, soup would count. And also having plenty of fruits and vegetables will help make sure that you're getting fluid because they have 85 to 95% of water in them. Um, so just keep this in mind as some ways to make sure that you're getting your fluid throughout the day and that you remember to um, aim for the recommended amount. Okay, so now we'll talk about our first food group, whole grains. It is recommended that we consume about 30 to 45 grams of fiber a day, and having whole grains helps us meet that goal because whole grains are a source of fiber. The average American actually only has about 15 grams of fiber a day, so we're pretty far off from that target. So it's important to try to add in high fiber foods whenever you can to your meals and snacks. The reason that fiber is so important is that it can help lower cholesterol, it helps control blood sugar, it helps us maintain a good bowel function, and it can even reduce the risk of gastrointestinal cancers. High fiber foods also tend to be high in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, so you're getting some additional benefits from those foods. So I'm not sure if you remember from before, but try to make half of your grains whole grains, and that will make it a little bit closer so you're getting closer to that fiber goal. 
So now you might be thinking, how can I add some high fiber foods? Um, okay, so now you're at the supermarket and you're trying to find the foods that have fiber and that would count as whole grains. Here are some tips. You want to look for labels that say whole wheat or whole grain as these tend to be highest in fiber. You also want to be careful of labels that advertise honey wheat, wheat, or multigrain because sometimes these foods can actually be made with white bread or refined flour. Um, so just in case you're not sure, the nutrition facts label is your best friend. Check the nutrition facts label under carbohydrates. It says dietary fiber. And you could compare products to find the one that has the highest fiber content. And some foods that you might want to look at would be your breads, um, crackers, chips, things of that nature, all right? So now that we discussed whole grains, we'll talk about fats. Fats are an essential nutrient in our diet. You get fats from nuts, seeds, oil, fish, so on. We'll go through it in a little bit, but... Generally speaking, there are four types of dietary fats, poly and monounsaturated fats, saturated fats, and trans fats, which you might remember from the tips earlier. We said you want to limit the saturated and trans fats, and that's true. Um, so we want to avoid saturated and trans fats whenever possible, which would include butter, lard, and whole milk dairy products. And the type of fat that we want to be having a lot of is the polyunsaturated and the monounsaturated fat. So this would be from foods such as olive oil, canola oil, peanut oil, sesame oil, avocado oil, avocados themselves, um, and nuts and seeds. And if you remember from those earlier slides, it said that one thing that people who live 14 years longer had in common was they had at least five fruits and vegetables a day. So in this slide we'll focus on um, fruit. So they could be your seasonal sweets. You could try to have fresh fruit every day to satisfy your sweet tooth or just for the nutrients. Um, you could also have fresh fruit with a baked dessert or ice cream so that you have a smaller portion of the dessert or ice cream and you fill up with the fruit. So for example, you could have angel food cake with strawberries, sherbet with pineapple on top, or yogurt with fresh fruit so that you get the best of both worlds. You get that tasty dessert and you get some tasty fruit with it um, to add nutrients while enjoying your dessert. Another major food group is protein foods. Um, so proteins are very important because they help our body build, repair, and maintain its body tissues. Um, and we recommend focusing on having lean protein sources like chicken, fish, turkey, pork, and eggs um, where you get a lot of the protein without as much fat. And you could also get protein from um, plant sources such as beans and lentils um, and tofu. But we want to make sure at least one-fourth of our plate is made of protein foods or another way to estimate your portion size is to make those protein foods about the size of the palm of your hand, which is usually about three ounces. And our last food group here is dairy foods. So dairy foods are important because they provide calcium and vitamin D, which are needed for bone and teeth health. Calcium also helps to control blood pressure, it's essential for nerve function, and it helps blood clot when you are bleeding. It is recommended that for older adults, they have about 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. This is about four servings of dairy per day. And you want to make sure that you're choosing dairy products that are low-fat or skim milk products because this will have less saturated fat. So try to have a dairy food, whether it be a glass of milk with your dessert or some cheese um, on your salad, so that you're getting enough dairy and calcium and vitamin D. And if you are concerned that you're not getting enough, supplementation is always an option. You could speak with your doctor about that. All right. So even though alcohol is not a food group, it is a big part of a lot of people's diet. So let's talk about how that can play a role in healthy eating. Um, if you remember from those slides in the beginning, 
one thing that people who lived longer had in common was they drank in moderation. One thing I would say is if you don't drink alcohol right now, there is no reason to start. Um, but if you are having alcohol, having it in moderation would mean for men having no more than two drinks per day, and for women having no more than one drink per day. Some studies do show um, that alcohol consumption in moderation may be associated with cardiovascular benefits, but these benefits are most likely from the antioxidant content of wine, not from the alcohol itself. So even though you may hear that it helps with cardiovascular benefits, you don't necessarily need to add in alcohol or wine just for a health benefit. It's just good to know if you are having alcohol, wine may be a good option to have, um, and you want to make sure that the serving of that drink is also proper. So a 12-ounce glass of beer, a 5-ounce um, glass of wine, and 1.5 ounces for liquor. And this is always a popular question. What foods are the very best foods that you could be having? So if you had to choose five foods, what would be the ones that I would push? And that's a little bit difficult to answer because we do want to make sure we're getting a variety of foods. There's no three foods in particular, but research does suggest that you should consume the following foods daily. So any fruit, any vegetable, Salmon and tuna are great sources of protein and omega-3 fatty acids, um, so having those at least twice a week would be great. Legumes like beans and lentils, you could add in by putting them on a salad or having them with rice and beans. Whole grains you should have every day, and at least half of your grains should be whole grains. Um, number six is nuts and seeds, so add them to your salad or have them as a snack. Olive oil is a great oil to be cooking with. Instead of butter, you could cook with olive oil and use that as a dressing. Um, eight would be lean protein foods. Nine is nourishing fluids, which would also include tea. Um, now that you know a little bit more about healthy eating, it might be more obvious when you're in your own home and you're cooking for yourself, but when you are buying food or getting food off of a menu. Some things that you could look for to make sure it's healthier um, are on this slide. So number one, you could choose items that are sauteed, broiled, or baked. These will likely have less fat on them, so it could be a healthier food choice. You could also review the calorie information on menus to compare. So most fast food um, places have calorie information that you could look up online or it's on the menu board itself and that could help you compare products and make a more helpful choice. Um, number three would be, if you know that the restaurant is serving a large portion, order one entree, one entree and share it with someone, or bring half of your meal home so that you're not having huge portions um, and large amounts of calories at once. You can make it into two meals. And you could also limit your dessert, so dessert doesn't have to be a daily thing, it can be on special occasions, or just cutting back the amount you're having now would be a great start. Okay, now we'll discuss aging with taste. As we age, we may experience a decrease in taste and smell. Some people notice this more than others. This can be because certain medications or health conditions can alter taste, um, or that we're less sensitive. So some ideas are to cook with more herbs, spices, um, lemon juice, or flavorings so that you're adding flavor from those instead of adding more salt or sugar. You could also add crunch to meals by adding chopped nuts or crunchy vegetables or granola to yogurt. And you could cook with strong flavors such as vinegar, garlic, onion, and sharp cheese to bring out the flavors of the dish, again, without adding more salt or sugar. So here are just some tips that you could think about when you're cooking if you do notice that your taste and smell is a little less sensitive than it used to be. Okay, and last but not least, we'll talk about physical activity. So it is never too late to start exercising. If you don't have that as part of your routine right now, you could get started in small ways by walking or 
doing a line dancing class or whatever it may be just to get you on your feet and moving a little bit more than usual. You can also talk to your doctor to find physical activity that would be safe for you. But there are many benefits of physical activity and they include the following. Number one, it helps with weight loss or maintaining a healthy weight. Number two, it can help to preserve bone density when you do weight-bearing exercises, such as holding light weights um, and doing arm curls or things of that nature. Um, number three, it keeps your heart and lungs healthy. Number four, it helps to maintain healthy blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol levels. What number am I even on? These aren't number, number five. It improves strength and balance. Number six. It helps to regulate digestion and appetite. Number seven, it can promote sleep, especially if you have trouble sleeping. You might notice that you're more tired after exercise and you'll get a better night rest. And it can also boost your mood, um, which is a huge benefit. You might just have more energy or feel a little happier after exercising. So these are all some reasons to consider um, adding some activity to your day. But remember, you could always talk to your doctor to find an activity that would be safe for you to do. And supplemental insurance. So I mentioned this a few times throughout the presentation, but if you are concerned that it's difficult for you to be getting the nutrients that you need, you could always consider a once daily vitamin. Um, that would be your insurance plan to make sure you're getting all the nutrients that you need. Um, many older adults also can benefit from a daily calcium and vitamin D supplement. You do want to be careful with supplements such as St. John's wort, that can interact with medications. So remember, you could always talk to your provider and see which supplements would be safe for you and if there are any interactions with medications you're taking. And remember, no pill can replace following a healthy diet and consuming five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day because those are packed with um, nutrients and you also get some food out of it. So it's a great benefit, um, but you could always increase the nutrients in your diet, and also add in a supplement just as an insurance plan. Okay, well, this is actually the end of the presentation. Um, I really appreciate you all listening. I know it would have been great if we could be in person, and unfortunately that's not possible right now, but I'm happy that we were still able to learn a little bit about nutrition together and hopefully get you thinking about ways you could add some nutrients to your diet, or start some healthy habits. Um, I did provide my information here, so if you ever do have questions and you want to learn a little bit more about nutrition, um, we have outpatient services over at St. Barnabas Medical Center, or you could always email me if you do have a question. All right? Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great day.